Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over viruses in general. We're going to look at their size, the components that make them up, the genetic material that they use, and the structures that are important for this class. Now looking at the size of viruses, they range anywhere from 10 to 100 nanometers. And although that may seem like a lot, let's just take a look in comparison. Over here we have a small bacteriophage, and this thing over here is not a little speck. That is to show in retrospect how big these things are, actually how small viruses can be. So a bacteriophage can be as small as like, let's say, 24 nanometers. And that might be pretty small, but down here we have our Ebola virus, which ranges in about 970 nanometers. But if you look at this big giant thing over here in pink, we can see that this guy is not a virus, but instead this is E. coli. And E. coli stands at 3,000 by 1,000 nanometers. Now you guys can see with some perspective how small viruses are compared to bacteria. For the whole quarter, it seems like we've been looking at bacteria, and these guys are very, very small. But viruses are even smaller than that. So something that I want to ask you guys is, we've been typically looking at our bacteria underneath a light microscope. Would we be able to identify these viruses under those same microscope? Please send me those responses and let me know why or why not. And as for the components of a virus, we're looking at the capsid, nucleic acid, spikes, and some viruses have an envelope. Up at the top, this first structure, this is what we consider to be a complex structure. And as you can see here, we have our DNA, which is encased in the capsid, and a modified spike structure. The spikes down here are receptor specific. They're looking for a particular type of cell. They don't want to bind to just any bacterial cell, any human cell. They're looking specifically for a type of cell. And this envelope that surrounds the capsid and the nucleic acid came from the host via exocytosis. So this virus was once, in, was once inside of a host cell, pushed itself out by exocytosis, and took a piece of that plasma membrane from the host cell. And what that does is it prevents the virus from being detected by the immune system. Because this envelope has the host receptors on it. So when the immune system comes along and reads this envelope, it says, oh, yourself, we're not going to attack you. So this is one of the virulence factors of the virus. The genetic material for viruses can either be DNA or RNA, and that can either be double-stranded or single-stranded. And that's referring to the DNA or the RNA. Now you'll never have a single strand of DNA mixed with a single strand of RNA. It'll always be DNA only or RNA only. Never a combination of both as the one genetic material. Now this is very important in classifying viruses as we will see in the Baltimore classification. Here we have a basic sketch of your Baltimore classification, and all of you guys should have this in your notes somewhere, where there are various types of genetic material a virus can have, and all they want to do is get to making mRNA. When they make that mRNA, they can follow down translation and make the proteins that they need in order to make all the viral components that we discussed earlier. There's one of two ways that this can happen, is that either the virus can bring in its own machinery, which can then read its genetic material in order to make the mRNA. Or that virus can hijack the host's machinery. So all of the primers, all of the polymerases, they will read whatever genetic material the virus tells it to read, which will be its own, in order to construct the mRNA. Now, taking a look, we have a single-stranded DNA up top. And that must first become double-stranded DNA before it becomes mRNA. 
Another way we have double-stranded RNA, where the complementary strand will be red in order to make the mRNA. Now there's two types of single-stranded RNA that we're going to look at, and that's positive and negative. Firstly, negative, that's the complementary strand of, of the mRNA that it wants. So all it has to do is just hijack or use its own machinery. It will read that negative RNA pr to produce the mRNA. Remember, they're the anti-parallel orientation. Whereas the positive RNA must first construct a negative RNA in order to get to the mRNA because these two are very identical. There's just a few things missing such as the host cell machinery be able, being able to process it. The host cell machinery cannot process this RNA but can process this. So the virus must then create a complementary strand of this, use whichever machinery it prefers in order to generate the mRNA. The question that I have for you guys is what is this positive RNA over here in the red doing when it creates a single-stranded DNA that goes to double-stranded DNA? I want you guys to answer that question for me and send it back to me through the email. As a hint though for this one, this is what retroviruses such as HIV use. And lastly we're going to take a look at the structures that are important for your class. So this first one right here, this little squiggly line, this is what we would call helical. This diamond looking one with the spikes coming out of it is called polyhedral. The circular with the spikes is what is an envelope. And remember not all viruses have an envelope. But what is the importance of an envelope when they do have one? And this last one is considered to be complex. This is a typical virus form that we see and have depicted in pictures all the time. Now let's review. The size of a virus can range anywhere from 10 to 100 nanometers. And as we saw, that's very small compared to bacteria that we've been looking at for pretty much the entire quarter. The components of viruses are capsids, nucleic acids, some viruses have envelopes but not all, and spikes. The genetic material is either DNA and RNA, any combination of the two and that can be double-stranded or single-stranded, and the structure that we've looked at are helical, polyhedral, envelope, and complex. Now, if you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to shoot me an email, and I look forward to hearing from you guys.